good afternoon. Thanks for tuning into your Cyber Sue. Today we're going to discuss what are your five top relationship goals. The one thing that's great about being in a committed relationship when you're both on the same page with each other is you understand that it's important to have goals and to have things that you meet as a priority on a regular basis. And if you're both in a reciprocated place with this, it can make your relationship really last forever because you're both understanding the importance of nurturing it. When we don't pay attention to what's going on in our partnerships is when things start to falter. They start to change and we're sitting there not understanding what the hell happened. Where, where did we go wrong? Well, the first thing that you should always have as a couple is a few goals that you're both in agreement with. Now I'm talking about from the very beginning of your relationship and all the way through it, it consistently. What happens is we will start by doing that in the very beginning thinking that this is a great idea and then we get lazy or we forget about it or we just think, oh, you know, we're together as a couple, we're good. The thing with relationships is they constantly need to be nurtured. There needs to be a lot of, of attention paid to certain parts of a relationship. And it sounds like a lot of work, but it's basically just maintenance. And when you have great maintenance throughout your relationship, there's actually not a lot of work to do because you're doing it every day, just maintaining the importance of how it is to love each other, be romantic with each other, and keep your home a happy place. So let's talk about five things that I think are great. Now everybody's going to have different priorities in their relationship and what matters to them as a couple. But there, here's a few things that I think are really just five basic goals. You should have a lot more goals than this, but these are the basic ones that will keep your, the foundation of your relationship strong. So the first one is communication. Now. I know we hear that every day. Oh yeah, I gotta communicate, gotta communicate. But communication means different things to different people. When you're a couple, when you can open up about things that might be bothering you, things that are really good, whatever's going on in your life and you want to share it with your partner but maybe you're afraid to, maybe you're a little bit worried about how they're going to answer and, and be a part of the conversation, this is when you know if you're in a good place or not, when you're both on board with wanting to communicate. So something's going on at home, you say, okay, I've got to sit down and talk to my partner about this. When you're not afraid to be open and to share your feelings, your, your thoughts, maybe some things that you're worried about with your partner, they always know where they stand and it's it's a reciprocated situation hopefully that you always understand where they're coming from too it doesn't mean you have to agree with every little thing but you're communicating your concerns or you're communicating happy things that are going on as long as you're talking on a daily basis basis and you are hearing each other that's a huge one because a lot of people will complain as a relationship dissolves over the years because they didn't feel heard. Another thing, when you communicate and you're open with each other, you're not letting things build up. A lot of arguments come from not talking about things, from burying them or just saying, oh, I forgot to tell them this or I didn't do that. This is where the arguments come in. This is where it becomes a problem in the relationship because the communication walls kind of fall down. They crumble because you're not nurturing them. You're not building them up to staying in a, in a very happy place. And by doing that, by saying every day, having a little conversation with your partner about maybe what happened during the day, what you're concerned about, and hearing their point of view as well, this keeps your relationship flowing in a really good direction. Number two, loving each other unconditionally. Sometimes we go through things in our lives that are hurtful or harmful or devastating towards us. Something that might be going on in our own personal lives with our career, with our kids, with something. Being there for each other, hearing each other out and supporting each other, no matter what's going on. Even if sometimes you don't agree with maybe what they're upset about or what they wanna do, 
hearing them out and coming to a good d discussion and conclusion together is really wonderful when you have this in your relationship. You're loving them through anything that goes on, but you're talking about it and you're hearing them. This is one thing that I hear in my coaching all the time about people not feeling heard and feeling sort of alone within their own partnership. You always want to be there for each other and be unconditional with each other. Number three, being active together, doing things together. It doesn't have to be some major sport crazy event or anything like that. It can just be something as simple as going out for a date night and going to a trivia place or doing something together for a walk just or going for a, a light hike somewhere. Couples who play together really do stay together. When you have things to look forward to on the calendar that you're doing together as a couple, it automatically keeps you close. As long as you're not competitive with each other because that can cause problems. But you want to be able to always look forward to doing something with your partner. I know that you've heard this from your friends and from other couples that the relationship can break down when you start making each other a priority. You're living separate lives. You're doing your thing, they're doing their thing. And that's good to have a little bit of that in your relationship, but you really want to stay connected. And the way to do that is to have fun together. So do as much as you can with each other outside the home and have a little fun. Stop thinking about all the things you have to do, all the financial issues you might be dealing with, Go out and do something fun, just even if it's a walk with each other. Because the minute you're outside of your own home, you, talk, you start to talk more. You're more open with each other. You let down, you know, those, those guards of the things you have to do at home all the time. And it puts you into a place of when you met, like how you were together in the very beginning of your relationship. It truly keeps you connected as a couple. Reciprocated intimacy and romance. This, unfortunately, is something that happens to a lot of couples where it starts to fizzle. People get too busy in their home. They don't pay attention to what is not happening anymore between them. And eventually what happens is you, you lose that, that closeness with each other. You're almost afraid to initiate it anymore because of maybe so many times it was said no or you're too busy to make it happen. This is really important in a relationship and definitely the top five goals to maintain the intimacy in your partnership. It's not okay just to let it go unless you're on the same page and you're just not interested in it. But most people do want to have closeness with their partner. They want to be romantic. They want to be loving to each other. But sometimes it can be an unbalanced scenario. So please talk about this with each other. Compromise. Maybe one person is a little oversexed more than the other one is and come to a nice compromise as a couple on how you can be happy with this. Because we're always going to be a little bit different with our, our tastes or on what we want and how often we want to do things. Just, if you have to mark it on the calendar, mark it on the calendar. But please don't let this part die in your relationship. Number four, loyalty and respect. Those two things, well to me they're go right together and that's the way it should be. But if you have that with each other, you always have each other's back. You're respecting each other, regardless of what situation is going on. Even if it's something maybe you don't agree with, it's happening, a friend's arguing with your partner, just have their back. You don't have to agree with every single thing, but have their, give them support, have their back, talk to them about it when you're in private t together and just say, you know, here's my opinion on the matter. I do have support for you. Offer maybe another suggestion, offer something to them, but be loyal to them and always be there for them. Because when you lose respect for your partner, that's the beginning of the end of your relationship. Because you don't want to come home, you look at them differently, you don't want to be intimate with them, and you might start to be disloyal to them. So this is something that you really always want to pay, pay close attention to. If you both have boundaries that you adhere to and honor with each other, that's great. We're not going to have the same boundaries necessarily, but if you honor them and respect the person that you're with and understand why they have these boundaries and why you have your boundaries, 
you'll you'll have a, a good path to, to follow on because you know where to go and where not to go with each other. And this is important because sometimes we don't talk about that openly enough and our partner isn't aware that we have certain boundaries. So make sure you have that and talk about it with your partner. And the last one of all is to evolve and grow together as best you can throughout your years together. Because what happens is sometimes one person evolves better and stronger and faster than the other one. And then what happens, you get left in the dust or you feel you're being left in the dust. If you always include each other in what you're doing, what you want to do, and ask their opinion and advice as well, and make sure they're okay with it and vice versa, you're always talking. So all those other points and goals that I talked about earlier all come into the same thing. Because when you have all those other four, you do evolve together as a couple. Just make sure that one doesn't go in the complete opposite direction. Communicate about it, talk about it, and make sure that you're both always going to be on a similar page. If they decide that they want to move to Costa Rica and you don't, this is going to be a problem. So you want to always talk about these things before they just kind of be put on the table and then you've got to deal with it. Figure out what you can both do as a couple moving forward and compromise with how you evolve. Because you should always grow as a couple. But growing in the same direction is where you want to go. So please stay connected by always communicating about everything. And be happy for each other. Take some time to yourself. Have a little space here and there. And then come back together when you see each other and you've got lots of great things to do. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to my channel and please leave any comments and like the video. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.